My sermon passage is 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 to 31, page 991 in the Pew Bible. Continuing. For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the cleverness of the clever I will thwart. Where is the wise man? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God the world did not know God through wisdom, it pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For consider your call, brethren. Not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, whom God made our wisdom, our righteousness, and sanctification and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let him who boasts boast of the Lord. The word of the Lord. May God grant us wisdom and courage for interpretation. <clears throat> you know, as complicated as the problems with the messed up church in Corinth might have been, the Apostle Paul, Pastor Paul, kept the solution simple. Remember, among other things, the Corinthian Christians were falling in behind specific alleged leaders in the churches. And remember, he wrote earlier in this chapter, I appeal to you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree and that there be no dissensions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same judgment. There is quarreling among you. Each one of you says, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? And then Paul said he was glad he hadn't baptized very many of them, for Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, and not with eloquent wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my rock and my Redeemer. Amen. Paul preached the cross, the theology of the cross, theologia crucis, which sounds like eloquent wisdom, and if it is, that's all the eloquence you'll get from me today. But it's not. It's just Latin. But it sounds impressive, though, doesn't it? Theologia crucis. And I wonder, though, if that's part of what Paul got all riled up about, misplaced pride. People in Corinth showing off like that, among the other messed up things, because there is no showing off in Christ, or there ought not be anyway. Because Pastor Paul says God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise, God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong, God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that aren't to bring to nothing things that are, so that no human being might boast of himself in the presence of God. So he pointed to the cross of Christ. And in this moment anyway, he kept it simple. That's what he thought they needed to hear. You know, it was the simple cross of Christ that got to me as a kid before I understood much at all or thought I did. Before I got so smart about church and stuff and got a little smart, a little smart elecky about church and stuff. I was eight years old 
And I summarized my theology of the cross like this once, way before I knew there was such a thing as theology, which just means thinking and talking about God. That's what theology means. On a notepad Mama gave me to keep me occupied during church, I drew a stick figure on the ground. That was me. And then I drew a cloud up in the sky. And up there in that cloud, I imagined God, which is about as close as any other image of God that we might imagine. And between the two, kind of suspended there in the air, I drew a cross. Now, like a good Baptist or any other Protestant, it was an empty cross, not a crucifix. Because we tend to emphasize the risen Christ more than the crucified Christ. None of which I knew at the time. I had just never seen a crucifix. The crosses I'd always seen were bare. So that's what I drew. Me at the bottom, God at the top, and Jesus in the middle, getting me to God and getting God to me somehow. I showed it to Mama, I showed it to Mama and she looked down at me, beaming, because she knew I got it. And it wasn't long after that that I walked the aisle in the Baptist tradition, prayed with a pastor, Brother Roy Lynn, and after several weeks of him coming out to the house to walk me through some scriptures, I went to an evening service at First Baptist Church in Muldrow, Oklahoma, for the very first time. It was a special occasion. I got baptized. Dunked, also, in the Baptist tradition, because we were Baptists. Well, here's what I got and what I remember to this day from the times with the pastor before he baptized me. Romans 8, 38 and 39 in the King James. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen and amen. They'll preach every Sunday. It took, and it has stayed took all these years, <laughs> whether I was being especially faithful or especially faulty. And of course, I've usually been both lately. <clears throat> and a simple theology took, took root in my mind and my heart. Here I am. There is God. I can't get to God, so God must get to me somehow. And that somehow is Jesus. Jesus saves. Amen. And after four college degrees, including a Master of Divinity, that is still my basic theology of the cross. Jesus saves somehow. Let him. And doesn't that sound silly? Foolish? Outlandish even? Unless you get it. But even getting it is a gift from God. Which sounds like even more foolishness unless you get it. See, you got to get it to get it. And right there, people walk away unless the Holy Spirit grabs them and gets them and introduces them to Jesus, for which we should pray. Now, see how easy it is to complicate all this when you get human wisdom mixed up in it, the wisdom of the world. But Paul kept it simple. He pointed to the cross, and it was empty. No offense to our Catholic brothers and sisters. Because crucified Christ is risen, is risen and is among us living, bringing us together and bringing us all together to God because God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. Learn it, live it, love it, but even that complicates it. Paul kept it simple because the Corinthians, as messed up as they were, were Jesus followers in their weirdly different, self-important, self-righteous ways. And he thought they just needed to calm down and behold the cross and its atonement. It's at one mint. The ultimate making of amends between God and people and all of God's creation. The incarnation without which the cross has no more meaning than any other cross or electric chair or gallows or firing squad. The incarnation, the entering of the divine into the mundane of God into humanity and the entering of humanity into the divine. Salvation. And I've gone and complicated again with some human wisdom, so-called. Paul just pointed to the cross to remind the Corinthians to rely on that, all of it as they understood it. 
We might say, have faith in Jesus. But did you know that places in the New Testament that talk about that, faith in Jesus, can just as accurately be translated as the faith of Jesus? So, which is it? What saves us? Our faith in Jesus or Jesus' faith in God his Father? This kind of question is what I like to call beer talk or beer in pizza talk. When you're in seminary, you might find yourself with others late at night pondering these things over pizza and beer. Call it beerology, working out our salvation with beer and trembling, as it says in Philippians. No, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> That's fear and trembling, as the King James puts it. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling, it says, or as the Message Bible puts it, much less menacingly. Be energetic in your life of salvation, reverent and sensitive before God. I like that. Be energetic in your life of salvation and reverent and sensitive before God. And I've done it again, complicated things like Paul didn't. He just pointed to the empty cross of crucified and risen Christ. The cross stood above the Jewish desire for signs and wonders, and it stood above the Greeks' insistence on human wisdom. The cross towers over both in its and in Jesus' lowliness. It towers in its lowliness. What foolishness. Paul could have really complicated the cross, and here I use the word cross to mean the atonement of the cross, the reconciliation of humans with one another, and the reconciliation of God and people. Paul could have talked about the governmental theory of atonement, that Christ suffered for humanity so that God could forgive people without punishing them while yet maintaining divine justice. But he didn't. Paul could have talked about the moral influence theory of atonement, which says Jesus died as the demonstration of God's love. And the example of his death can change hearts and minds and influence sinners to turn to God. But he didn't. Paul could have talked about the theory of substitutionary atonement, the idea that Jesus died for us instead of us, or the ransom theory of atonement, which says Jesus died as a ransom sacrifice paid to Satan to satisfy the debt on human souls and release them from the bondage that comes from inherited sin. This can get real complicated. But he didn't. Or the penal substitution theory of atonement, which says Jesus voluntarily submitted to God's plan and was punished or penalized in the place of sinners to satisfy God's demand for justice so God can justly forgive human sin. But he didn't. He just pointed to the empty cross, which means he pointed to the symbol of the risen Jesus alive among the Corinthians, no matter how messed up they were as Christians. Like Jesus lives today among all Christians, no matter how messed up we are. You know, theology is fine. I love theology. You might say I make part of my living doing theology, but it's adoration. It's love for Jesus. That's something yeah. else. Remember those t-shirts back in the day? Bar the Coca-Cola slogan. Jesus Christ is the real thing. And wouldn't we all like to teach the world to sing in perfect harmony? Well, how about this? <clears throat> at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. And the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. And now I'm happy all the day. Most days. Behold the cross. To God be the glory. Great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son. Who yielded his life and atonement for sin. But let's not sweat the details. And open the life gate that all may go in. Do what? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he has done. Behold the cross. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. 
look to Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's just something about that name, yeah. Master, Savior, Jesus. Like the fragrance after the rain. Mm. Look to Jesus, 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 sweetest. I got the, I got, I messed up the tune. Sweetest name I know. Sweetest name I know. Fills my every longing. Keeps me singing as I go. Y'all look to Jesus when we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word. What a glory He sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. That has become my second favorite hymn, behind what a friend we have in Jesus. But obey what, you messed up Corinthians? Obey what, you messed up American church? Obey this which is more pure foolishness to the world. Look to the cross where Jesus gave it all, and so all to him we owe. Look to the empty cross humbly, knowing we can never justify ourselves before one another, let alone God. Look to the cross and listen to Jesus. Hear Jesus. He said, People will know that you're my disciples not because you follow Apollos or Cephas or any other celebrity preacher. Not because you believe this, that, or any other theology, but this one. And it's not complicated at all. It's love. Self-giving, but not self-denying. Love. That's Theologia Crucis, the theology of the cross. Demonstrated by Christ on the cross and off. If you have love for one another, the world will know you follow me. That's it. So get along, church, Paul said. On these lesser things, agree or disagree, but I won't referee. But you all, we all have to come together and agree on one thing. Listen again to Jesus. This is my commandment. This is my commandment. That you love one another as I have loved you. Jesus said, Amen. Amen.